Is it unethical to alter the genetic composition of any living being by deleting certain genes or by splicing into its genome the genes of totally unrelated species? There are so many potential benefits to using stem cells in genetic engineering. However, there are also some serious ethical considerations that need to be discussed. These ethical concerns can, can be categorized into environmental, agricultural, industrial, economic and social, medical and health, or spiritual and religious. Now, genetically modified plants, or GM crops, are now common around the world. Europe has very strict laws and no GM crops are grown and sold in the UK apart from a few field trials. But in the US, more than half the maize, cotton and soya crops are GM and they are very, very common in China and India as well. Now you can grow GM crops to produce proteins that could be used in medicine, such as vaccines, but the majority of GM plants really are just grown to be resistant to herbicides or uh, insect pests. One example is Bt cotton. Now, Bt cotton is a genetically engineered cotton plant that produces a toxin against the bullworm pest. The Bt gene was taken from a bacterium. It has reduced the need for pesticides and produced a higher yield. So, it has been sold worldwide and is uh, widely used. But there are some disadvantages. The pest could evolve resistance to the toxin. Now this has happened and farmers are encouraged to also grow 50% of their crops as non-GM areas called refuges, but whether that's being done enough is, is debatable. Uh, it could damage other species other than the pest and lab experiments have shown that this could happen, although there is little evidence that it's happening in the wild at the moment. And also one of the biggest uh, concerns people have is with gene flow, that genes could spread to other species or wild varieties of cotton plants. Now this can happen, but crops are grown far apart from the other similar species, as usually the pollen is only viable for a short amount of time. But again, is that really a foolproof solution? Another example of a GM crop is a glyphosate resistant oilseed rape. Now oilseed rape is grown for use in biodiesel or fuel, lubricants, and foodstuffs, and growing this herbicide resistant crop allows the plants to be sprayed with weed killer, killing all the weeds, leaving no competition for the crop. So this is now being used uh, widely because it hugely increases the yield. You can plant your oilseed rape, spray your gly uh, glyphosate weed killer everywhere, it kills everything else, and you get a perfect crop of oilseed rape. The gene came from a strain of agrobacterium bacteria originally. So what are people's concerns? Well, the plant could become a weed itself. If this is uh, a plant that is resistant to weed killer, then it could just start growing everywhere and we wouldn't be able to kill it. There is no evidence that this is happening, but it is a concern of people. Herbicide resistant weeds will evolve due to the overuse of specific weed killers. Well, you know, exactly. If we're gonna keep using these weed killers over and over again, huge quantities of them, then surely that's just gonna increase the, the chances of um, a mutation occurring. But like the overuse of antibiotics and the production of superbugs, we could end up with a super weed. Gene flow, again, is another problem. Genes could be spread to other species of wild varieties producing more resistant weeds. If this resistant gene spread elsewhere, we're gonna get all sorts of resistant weeds all over the place. Now, this happens between oilseed rape and wild turnip in the lab, and this has been shown that it could happen. Uh, but again, they are uh, only allowed to grow them at safe distances, but in practice, that's you know, not necessarily fully effective. Now, some of the issues are not really due to science, but with politics and practices surrounding genetic engineering, especially with GM crops. For example, farmers are relying much more on herbicides. GM seeds are expensive and only rebuying each season. Uh, we're in danger of losing traditional varieties and GM crops are, are patented by agribusiness companies leading to monopolization of the global agricultural food and control and distribution of the world food supply. And that is a serious concern, but that is a political concern rather than uh, to do with uh, the actual science behind GM crops and whether they are um, fundamentally bad or not, or dangerous. Some industrial concerns, we are because we are now using many different ways of manufacturing proteins, such as enzymes and hormones for humans um, by using genetic engineering. And another example is genetically modified hamster cells, which are being used to produce clotting factor, factor 
8, uh, or autogenetically modified insect larvae, which produce the enzyme adenosine deaminase, ADA, which is used to treat SCID, whilst patients are waiting for gene therapy, or transgenic sheep, which produce alpha antitrypsin in their milk to treat people with emphysema. Now, people are concerned, are we contaminating germ lines here? Are we meeting animal rights and welfare by using animals in this way, transgenic animals? Should we be putting human genes into animals? These are just some of the cons ethical considerations uh, in this area of genetic engineering. People are concerned about many health risks to humans associated with using GM crops or proteins from transgenic animals. Will we have allergic reactions to them? Will they create superbugs in our guts? Could they affect other unintended genes? There is no or little evidence for any of these concerns, but equally a lot of research has been done by the industry themselves or by university studies funded by them. So people are understandably skeptical and need further evidence before proceeding and being convinced that GM crops is the right way forward for the human population. As always, there are some good extension questions here, which you can use to help expand your knowledge on this topic.